Creepy Cutie Crafty. Hello and welcome back to Creepy Cutie Crafty and for another crafty arty type of video. This one's slightly more unusual than usual, if that makes any sense. I'm going to show you a technique that I've used for several gish tasks over the past few years and I've got quite handy at it, but it is a little bit out of the ordinary. At the end I'll show you some of my previous images that I've done, but for starters I'm going to do two images. Uh, the first one's just going to be a random pattern and the second one is going to be of a character. You might be asking yourself, why is this so unusual? It's not strange or odd to do drawings and paintings because I'm not going to be drawing or painting. I'm going to be using these. These are some of the pigments that I'm going to be using. These are a variety of herbs and spices. So we've got tarragon, we've got sumac, we've got asafoetida, we've got some rose petals, we've got some pink peppercorns and we've got some smoked paprika. So yeah, I'm going to be using these to create an image. The first one I'm going to be doing is kind of like a circular pattern and then the second one will be of a character like I say. Let me know down in the comments if you've done any unusual images like this. Have you had a go at doing gish yourself maybe or have you had a go at doing pictures out of spices or out of any other unusual mediums. At the end of the video I will show you some of my previous pieces and you can tell me what you think of those. In the meantime if you like this video please remember to like, comment and subscribe and click that little bell button down there at the bottom so you don't miss any of our videos. Once again it is just going to be me but I think Squinks wants to have a go at doing a video with me in a couple of weeks time so that's something to look forward to. Right on we go. The first thing that you need to do is set up your table. So I've got this piece of paper here. This is manga paper from a manga sketch pad, which is this stuff here. The reason why I've used this is because it is very, very thin, so you can slip it in and out of the cover very easily. Underneath that, I've got some ordinary black paper just stuck to the table, and over that we've got this sheet of thin acetate. Now, one of the things to be aware of when you're using acetate is that it does get quite static. So try not to rub it too much, otherwise the spices will start jumping all over the place, which can give you some interesting effects, but at the same time, if you're trying to do a specific image, it isn't so good. The black sheet underneath, I've covered every corner with sellotape and sellotaped it down to the table. Normally I would use invisible tape, like diamond tape, so you don't see it so much. And then on this end, I put a layer of tape going across here. I've tried not to overhang the corners because then the sheet underneath will get stuck and then with this sheet uh, at one end I've stuck two sellotape tabs so put a piece of sellotape underneath folded it over and put it on top that way I can pull it out from underneath once I've completed the picture on this sheet I've done some very basic guidelines so that I can see where I'm going to put the lines and then at the end if you want to if you take a photograph of it or whatever you increase the contrast or you change the lighting on the photo if you've got a photo editing app on your phone and you can make it look quite effective. So I've got all these colours here. Off screen I've got a whole load of other spices and herbs. I've got things like white pepper, I've got ground cloves, I've got some nigella seeds which I will put into my other palettes here and you can see these ones are black so they'd be quite good for outlines and things. I've also got white pepper. Thing is if you look closely you can see that although it's called white pepper it's just slightly green. The same as when you ground black pepper it's just a darker green so you can see what kind of effects you can get with that. I'm gonna add some fenugreek. I'm gonna add some darker greens as well so I've got some oregano here. It's a nice deep green there. I've got some thyme and some sage here. We've got some allspice, some mustard, some fennel seeds. If you've got seeds and things, you can create some quite interesting patterns. If you use tweezers, it can be quite effective. The other thing I'll need is something to work with. Now, I've got my teaspoon. I've also got some of these, which are little cocktail sticks that you can use to push them around. I've also got one of these just to spread but the main tool you're going to be using is just that. So let's get started. I'm using the nigella seeds here which are onion seeds as a nice black outline. thing about using this acetate is that it makes a very smooth surface. It's easy to slide the spices along on it. That's the 
first layer done. I think I'm going to go in with a Zavadida. What I'm doing is I'm rubbing my fingers together so that the spice unclumps and then comes out at a particular angle. It's never going to be perfect, but it's a start. See how the spice spreads as you work. And also to remember to wipe your fingers between doing these and definitely, definitely, definitely don't rub your eyes. If you rub your eyes and it's covered with any of these spices, it's gonna hurt. Bad idea, very bad idea. Next, I'm gonna go with some smoked paprika. shape these in a little bit with the cocktail stick. There we go, that's that first bit done. I'm going to add just a little circle in there, trying to turn it into a sort of drop type shape. Some white pepper, I think. This is the one that's really going to stop tickling my nose. I've got to be careful about this one. Just using the flat of this to flatten it out, make a nice sort of leaf shape. Be careful because they can spring in the wrong direction and land on something that you've very carefully placed. I think I'm going to do a row of tarragon. these leaves of tarragon are slightly bigger than the powders using just a cocktail stick is quite effective. Again with the tweezers and with some dried rose petals. These aren't going to be all the same size but adds to the uh, organic effect of the image I guess. If I was doing a character or a face, I would be much more precise and I'd be trying to look for things that were exactly the right shape or the right size, but this is just a pattern, so I'm not worrying too much. And then some peppercorns, I think. And I think I'm going to put some in the centre as well. done. What I'm going to do now is using a little bit of mustard to a sort of loose circle around the outside. I'm using three fingers to make a triangle to make the paprika fall in a single place. One last thing I'm going to do with these is just do a little bit of scattering with these bits on the edge. Just add a bit of dimension to it. Right then, now comes the fun part. Let's see what this looks like on the black paper. It's quite a transformation, isn't it? Just sort these bits out here. And we are done. What do you 
you think of that? It's not the most detailed and perfect thing I've ever made, but it gives you an impression of how the process works and what I do to create the images. Now, unfortunately, comes the part of the process that some people don't like, because unfortunately, this is on my dining room table and I can't put it in a frame, so I have to wipe it off. I've given myself literally a clean slate to move on to the next one. See you in a bit. The next thing I'm going to do is a picture rather than a pattern that you've seen before. The sheet of acetate is still usable and then I'm going to have a go at doing a picture. Now I'm sure you can see this but I'm going to have a go at doing a little cartoon character which I'm sure you'll all recognise. I haven't yet put on the tabs on the end but I'll do that in just a second. Just get myself some sticky tape. Take off a couple of inches there. Put the tab just underneath on the corner and then fold it back on itself. It will almost definitely not lie flat, but that's okay because you want to be able to lift it up without too much scrabbling. And I just do the same on the other corner. Sometimes I do images with colours that aren't quite correct. You aren't going to get purple or blue or intense reds or things like that with spices because they're, they're spices. There's some beautiful colours but not necessarily all the colours you want. But you can always add in different colours that are the same hue. So when I did this image that I'll put up on screen now of Stan Lee, I didn't have exactly the right flesh tones for the face but I could still do an approximation in a different colour so it was still quite effective. Right then. So I'm going to start by bringing my nigella seeds to the front. With the nigella seeds, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the inside and work the way out. That way I've got less chance of knocking down what I've put in place already. So that's the eyes done, and then I'm just going to work on the outlines. This is the thing you've got to be very careful about not knocking what you've already put in place. But I can go. Yeah, there we go. We squished his eye. So that's the outline done. I'm going to start filling in the colour. You can see where I've gone over. I'm not going to worry about that. This is why I do the shading first, because then I can cover it with the lighter colours that are going to be filling up the main body. instead. You saw the seeds and the spices just jumping around then. It looks an awful lot darker than this character normally would be, but I am doing the shading first and then I'll add some other colours and just brighten it up a little bit. I'm currently using allspice and it smells amazing. It's probably called the biscuits my mum used to make when I was a kid. So I've got two yellows, I've got mustard and I've got asafoetida. I'm going to start with the mustard and then work to the asafoetida on the brighter areas because asafoetida is slightly brighter. absolutely do not want to rub my eyes right now. That mustard will hurt like a... Yeah. 
to remember as you're doing this is that because I'm going to be taking away the white paper you're going to have the black background showing through unless you want to keep it as white paper obviously you can use that to your advantage to add more shading or to help to find the outlines but you will need to bear that in mind that's that part done what I'm going to do now is take the white sheet out and then finish the image there you go, you can see how different it looks now with the black background. You can see where the, the black is slightly showing through. I'm just going to add a bit of the brighter yellow from the mustard on here and here. Asafoetida just over here, so we've got a bit lighter. I'm going to use my tweezers to add in some of those toes. And then finally, into the background. I'm not going to do too much because I don't really need to. attempt at creating Pikachu out of just herbs and spices. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. It's not the most detailed piece of artwork, but it's quite fun. And if you want to have a go at this at home, if you can't find acetate to do it with, use some tracing paper or just some ordinary white paper. I do recommend getting some cocktail sticks and tweezers and things. And you can see it's, it's quite tricky, but it is quite fun to do. And before I close down this video, I'm also going to show you several of the previous pieces of work that I've done in this style. I'm going to let you try and guess what they'll be made out of because some of them are a bit unusual. Uh, that draws me to the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed watching this slightly crazy method of creating art. Squinks may come back in a future video. They've said they're interested in doing something maybe next week. In the meantime, just remember to like, comment and subscribe. Maybe comment below what kind of artwork you would like to see stuff made out of. If you want to give me a challenge, feel free. I'm up for a challenge anytime. Come by to say hello. Hello, it looks really cool. Do you like it? No, you really don't do it. Oh no! I have my moments. Oh, no, yeah, that's the problem. Is that? <laughs> yeah, it, it'll do you that. Breathe. As you can tell, Squinks isn't very well today. They've got a bit of a cold, mm. which is one of the reasons why I've said to stay away from this because there's a chance of coughing and sneezing all over it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, maybe we'll see you together in the next video. And yeah. bye bye. <laughs> Thank you.